Uh, Howard. Uh, Chris, uh, I want to apologize first for not walking over in the rain from the spin room to where you are. It was an act of cowardice <laughs> well, on my Well, you're not part, as hardy but... as the people here. Yeah. Look at these people. Okay, yeah, Look there you go. <laughs> 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 Go ahead, Howard. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, he had to, McCain had to win tonight, and, and he didn't quite do it. Uh, I thought that that's as good as McCain could be on the economy. In other words, he was attacking, attacking forcefully and cleverly on the economy against Obama, and, and McCain had a new proposal with which he tried to make news about buying mortgages directly from the government and so on. That's as good as he could package as the economic stuff at a time when the country cares about it and everything seems to be falling apart. But it wasn't enough, it wasn't convincing enough, and he didn't knock Obama off his game there. And there were several other moments where Obama both stylistically and substantively outperformed McCain. So Roger's bottom line is right. McCain had to knock him out or get, change the game. That did not yeah. happen tonight. Sure. Roger, what do you think of the fact that for four days now we've had this sort of aerial bombardment of Barack Obama from the uh, campaign of uh, Sarah Palin on the issue of Bill Ayers and dubious figures in his past, particularly right. this weatherman back in the 60s and 70s who he met in the 90s. The fact that the candidate for president would not deliver the knockout blow, wouldn't bring up the name, what does it tell you? It tells me they don't want him to go there, or he doesn't want to go there. He still has another chance to go there. But if he went there tonight, and on a day the Dow plunges, what, another 500 points, and people right. are saying, look, we don't want to hear about some bomber from the 60s. How are you going to save my kid's right. college fund? If that failed tonight, McCain would have had no recourse. He still got that in reserve. Okay. But, I mean, his whole thing, his whole shtick was steady hand on the tiller. He used that phrase twice. That's his game plan. There's a great line in the movie, yeah, in the book, know, okay. uh, by Scott yeah. Turow, or, I, or Howard, it's called uh, Presumed Innocent, where the prosecutor says you have to point the finger at the accused and personally right. confront him if right. you want a conviction. How can the entire well, uh, uh, McCain campaign accuse Barack of a bad uh, relationship back in the 90s if he's not willing to deliver the indictment? How can they get away with it? Well, yes. Also, they had tried to say it wasn't just about Bill Ayers or even primarily about Bill Ayers. It was about Barack Obama's credibility, that he was lying about it, that he was covering up his associations and not being forthcoming. If it was an issue of character, they needed to make it. But I agree with Roger. Uh, McCain was in a tough spot here. People wanted to hear about the economy tonight. The whole surround, the whole okay. scene, the whole yeah. world is focused on that issue. And, and by the way, I thought on oh, the steady hand on the tiller part of it, that was one of Obama's strongest moments when he said, you're supposed to have the steady hand on the tiller. You say I'm green behind the ears, but you're the guy who sang bomb, bomb, bomb Iran, and you're the okay. one who said let's obliterate North Korea, et cetera. I thought that was one of Obama's strongest moments. Okay, well, let's work our way up to that strongest moment by Obama, but let's watch it. what I consider some of the strangest moments of the evening, which will be talked about till doomsday, perhaps. <laughs> Here's an awkward moment between John McCain and the uh, moderator of the debate. Obviously, the powers of the Treasury Secretary have been greatly expanded. The most powerful officer in the cabinet now, Hank Paulson, says he won't stay on. Who do you have in mind to appoint to that very important post? Senator McCain? Not you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> With good reason. Yeah. <laughs> what are we to make of that, Howard Feynman? Not you, Tom. No, just, I don't think Tom was putting well, his I name in nomination, so why was it withdrawn is what I want to know. Well, it was just McCain trying to indulge in a towel-snapping moment that didn't quite fit the circumstance. I mean, he was, he was just going for a joke, and it, wasn't, it was just not a very good joke. I mean, you know, it's nothing more you can say about it than that. Also, I think, well, I don't know. I just thought it was really a full mooner. What did you make yeah, of it? Yeah, it's also McCain saying, hey, wait a second, this is supposed to be a town hall. Tom, you're supposed to be a pot yeah, right. of What are you here? asking questions? Yeah, what are you I doing thought, asking I questions? Was, I thought it was him saying, I thought you were just going to watch this whole thing. You got a roll here? I didn't <laughs> yeah, know that. Right. Let's, take a, let's take a look at another moment which has caused some eyebrows to be raised. This is where McCain referred to the Democratic nominee for the presidency of the United States as that one. Let's, let's watch this reference. 
By the way, my friends, I, I know you grow a little weary of this back and forth. It was an energy bill on the floor of the Senate, loaded down with goodies, billions for the oil companies. And it was sponsored by Bush and Cheney. You know who voted for it? You might never know. That one. You know who voted against it? Me. <laughs> <laughs> that is something. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Yeah. That is the most amazing statement I've yeah. ever seen. Yeah. Roger, I don't know what, yeah. where, what, yeah. in what idiom do we refer to our main rival in the universe as that one? No, no good idiom. <laughs> it's not even a personal pronoun. No, it's uh, one. It's uh, not him. Especially when your an opponent is an African American and there's some sensitivity there of being dismissed as an object and not a human being. And the Obama campaign immediately. Immediately yeah, sent out an email that. to the press corps saying but, John McCain yeah, but, uh, called know. him that Howard, one. that one. What do you make they of call, that yeah, one? The, well, I, I got some of those emails and some exploratory emails because the Obama campaign was trying to test how upset people were about it. I don't think it was a racial thing at all. I think it was just a case of McCain acting like an old guy. I mean, it was like something your grandfather <laughs> would say. <laughs> you it know was, what it was I was like, hey, of, yeah, was what th- about that grand? What about that grandchild over there? What about that one? You know, it's, it's just... <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of the old Irish expression. See, you're one yeah, of the smart right. ones. You know, that's some old Irish yeah, expression. I have no ones. idea where yeah. it came from. Okay, now to your golden oldie, your favorite, Howard, the one of uh, the Beach Boys song. Let's hear it again. Here's yeah. that great shot from Barack Obama at his rival. And he remembered, by the way, the entire stack of golden oldies. He remembered every yes. one of the shots yeah. that, uh, that, uh, that uh, McCain had made. Here he is remi- reminding us of them. Now, Senator McCain suggests that somehow, you know, I'm green behind the ears and, you know, I'm just spouting off and... He's somber and responsible. Thank you very much. (laughs) Senator McCain, this is the guy who sang Bomb, 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 Iran, who called for the annihilation of North Korea. That, I don't think, is an example of speaking softly. This is the person who, after we had... We hadn't even finished Afghanistan, where he said, Next up, Baghdad. (laughs) <laughs> this is like an argument with your spouse when they remember everything you've ever done wrong and they remind you of it when you get into a fight. And that's another thing. And remember that time, and remember that time, remember that time. Howard, it was like a fight with his spouse that remembers everything. Oh, no. It, it, actually, I thought it was like a prize fight in the 13th uh, round where McCain had been throwing punch after punch after punch. And then McCain walked right into that one. Ob- Obama said, you know. Uh, he's portraying me as uh, green behind the ears, and he's the somber one. And then McCain said, thank you, and then, bam, yeah, right. Obama hit him with that whole long list of things. And Obama walked out into the middle of the stage. He played to the TV audience and to the audience in the hall. I thought, both in terms of style and substance, that was one of Obama's strongest moments of the night. And I think is the moment that, if there was any doubt, he won that debate. I think that was by, by the way... By Howard Feynman, you didn't hear it, but that was homage. That was an homage to Pittsburgh Billy Kahn trying to knock out <laughs> Joe Lewis in the 13th round. Yes. When he had him on yeah, points didn't work and out to for take Billy out Kahn, the Brown though. Bomber, and the Brown right, Bomber knocked right. him out. You are yes, Pittsburgh to the end. Howard Feynman, I know your thinking process. Thank you, Roger. Simon. We have so much fun here. We know each other like, I don't know, two old guys on a bench in Florida. <laughs>